Okay, and then my favorite book of the year, I finally read it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to one of my favorite videos to film every year, which is my favorite books of the year. I have selected 10 books that I enjoy the most, that are just absolutely amazing and that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to save my favorite book of the year for the end of this video, but all of these books I just loved very much and I'm so excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's take a look at my top 10, even though not in any particular order, just my favorite one books of 2023. As I said, I'm not going to go in any particular order, so I'm just going to grab the first one that I see, which is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. This follows a girl named Irina, and she obsessively takes explicit photographs of average looking men she persuades to model for her, scouted from the streets of Newcastle. And then she meets this one guy, things get a bit more intense with this particular guy and crazy things are happening. I love these type of books where we follow this main character, oftentimes a girl, who is becoming a bit unhinged. And of course the whole like unhinged female character lead books were very, very popular this year and I totally get the hype. It was incredibly intense, super well written and I can't wait to read more from Eliza Clark. She has a new book out, I believe called Penance, Pendants, Penance, something like that. And I also heard it's very good. So for a debut novel, this was absolutely amazing. I flew through it and I just love these very intense books with super interesting main characters that you just want to know more about and that are a little bit unhinged. Speaking of unhinged female characters, Otessa Moshvek, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which is all about a girl, I forget all the names obviously, but <laughs> let me see. Um, oh, is this, was this an unnamed girl? Maybe. It's about a young, thin, pretty, and recent Columbia graduate girl works an easy job at a hip art gallery and lives in an apartment on the Upper East Side. However, she is incredibly depressed. So what she decides to do is to kind of take a year off, take lots of drugs, and just stay home and lie in bed. And this was such an interesting story and like a concept that I'd never read before and never heard of before. And I was sucked into this story because it was incredibly interesting going into the mind of this main character, just like what she's thinking, how she's feeling, why she decides to kind of take a year off from work and be very all, you know, by herself and to herself with just a few people around sometimes. And I was sucked into this. Also the ending was quite shocking, so, Again, one of these unhinged female character books that just take things to an extreme level. And that's why I really enjoyed this one. Then we have Sally Rooney's Conversations with Friends, which is my favorite of Sally Rooney's novels. This is about Frances. She's 21 and she's a student in Dublin and an aspiring writer. And she performs spoken word with her best friend, Bobby. And at one of these like spoken word art nights, she meets this couple, Melissa and Nick, who's also an actor. And things between them, between the four of them, get very interesting and intense. The reason I think this is my favorite Sally Rooney book is because the people in this book actually communicated more compared to her other two books. And even though like normal people, the way they don't communicate kind of adds to the story and is super, super frustrating. I just, it makes me feel too frustrated. And in this book, they actually communicated. And I thought it was super, super good. And I really hope that she will write more of these type of books because this one was definitely my favorite of the three. Let me know in the comments, which Sally Rooney novel is your favorite? Okay, then we have a couple non-fiction. First one is Jane Goodall's The Book of Hope, which is all about how we can remain hopeful in a world that is currently not doing well. When we look at nature, when we look at our environment, when we look at the people and the animals around us and I listened to this on audiobook. I believe it was actually narrated by Jane Goodall herself. And I loved this one because it was so beautiful and inspiring and hopeful and heartwarming. And I just love her as a person. She's super inspiring. And it was just really, really interesting to get to know more about her and her life, as well as her thoughts on how we can, you know, remain hopeful basically. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. And there are photos in here as well. So if you do listen to it on audiobook, I do highly recommend you take a look at the physical book as well to see the photos that really add to the story. She has, you know, been everywhere in the world. It is so freaking inspiring and interesting and I love her. Another non-fiction is an essay collection called Conversations on Love. And these are all essays about love between, for example, lovers, strangers, parents, friends, endings, and beginnings. And this was just amazing. 
so emotional, heartwarming, beautiful and hopeful and I just love these type of books. It was just gorgeous. It was very inspiring to read so many different types of stories from so many different perspectives and you know um, between so many different people and how such easy things that take zero effort at all can mean so much to someone. It's so important to always try to be kind to one another because such easy and simple acts of kindness and love can mean so much to people. So if you just want to read something very heartwarming and will make you feel very hopeful and optimistic, highly recommend this one. It was so freaking beautiful. Then next we've got one that is so emotional and well written and beautiful. It is called Betty and this is a coming of age story following a girl named Betty and she is born in 1954 to a white mother and a Cherokee father. Betty inhabits a world of poverty and loss and lush landscapes and blazing stars. I believe this is actually based on real events from the mother of the writer Tiffany McDaniel, but um, yes, it says my mother Betty was born on February 12, 1954. So this is all based on real life events and life stories and this was so incredibly emotional and heart-wrenching and beautiful because she, this little girl went through so much especially living and like growing up in a world where there is so much poverty racism and just very tough times to be a little girl in this time with a white mother and a Cherokee father and how she got through this and how she became such a strong woman and I love this one it was so good. It took me quite some time to read it because it's quite big and just very intense to read and quite difficult times, but damn, this book was amazing and I highly recommend it. My next favorite is Mythos by Stephen Fry. I listened to this on audiobook and Stephen Fry narrated it himself because of course he's Stephen Fry. He has one of the best like narrator voices and he can do voices really well. And this is basically a retelling of lots of Greek mythological stories. And I know about a few of these mythological stories, but I never really read more about them. And this is basically just a whole collection of kind of retellings of these stories, which was so interesting and funny and cool. And just like, oh, I remember this. And oh, that's how it works because you know, like you probably know lots of these mythological figures but sometimes you don't really know the connection between the two but with these or like with this story and with this book it all made sense i'm just like oh i remember that from latin when i was young at high school and our teacher would tell like these greek myths i can never pronounce that word greek myth myths myths greek myth myth <laughs> i'll just say greek mythological stories <laughs> but it was absolutely amazing super entertaining super fun and if you're interested in Greek mythology, highly recommend this book. I also want to read the second one in this series, which is called Heroes. And that's all about Greek heroes from like mythological stories, you know? <laughs> okay, I've got three more. I'm honestly flying through this, but I'm just way too excited to talk about all of them. We have Christmas Days, written by Jeanette Winterson. This is my last like five star re read that I read this year and it was absolutely amazing. So for next Christmas and next December, pick up this book. This is basically 12 stories written by Jeanette Winterson, 12 fiction stories about Christmas and they've all got such beautiful messages in that. Sometimes they are fantasy stories, sometimes they are just, you know, contemporary fictional stories and there are also 12 recipes in here and these recipes are all from real people that she knows or knew and why these recipes have a special place in her heart especially like during Christmas time because they're all Christmassy recipes and I particularly love those recipe stories the most because they're all about stories from people that she knows and you know how she knows them their relationship between the two and just these very beautiful messages and like stories and just ah oh, I love this one I'd never heard of Jeanette Winterson before but it made my month basically within the first story I was already crying so it's just about the beauty of Christmas and how it is much more than just a religious holiday, but also about being together with friends, family, sharing food, sharing emotions, just having this very warm and cozy time. So if you're looking for a heartwarming and festive Christmas book, this is definitely it. And I feel myself rereading this book every year because that, it was that amazing. Okay, number nine is again a non-fiction book with essays. This is Dear Dolly, written by Dolly Elderton. And Dolly Elderton has written another book, Everything I Know About Love, which was also amazing. That's all about being like in your late 20s, early 30s. As a woman, how we can survive in this world. It's all based on things that she has 
you know, experience, but these are all letters that people wrote to Dolly with questions about love, about life, about friendship, about sex, about living, about work and stuff. Dear Dolly, how do I support my single friends when I'm in a relationship? Or dear Dolly, my good friend recently confessed his feelings for me. Can you learn to fancy someone? And there's more like on friendship, on family, on body and soul. And I just love Dolly Alderton a lot. I feel like her advice feels very real and comes from a place of experience, which I really admire. She's very, very open talking about her own personal life and, you know, giving tips on things that she has experienced and how that will help you with your love life, with your dating, friends, family, breakup, living, work, all of that type of things. It just feels very real and raw and that's why I just love her very much. She's very open and this book was amazing. Everything I know about love is still my favorite book like from her, but this one was also just so good and I flew through it. Okay, and then my favorite book of the year, I finally read it, is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I love that all these books on here are kind of like non-fiction, contemporary, historical fiction, and then my favorite book is the sci-fi. Andy Weir is one of my favorite sci-fi writers ever, and The Martian was amazing, but I think I preferred this one over The Martian. Uh, it was so freaking good. So this is all about Ryland and Ryland Grace is the sole survivor of a desperate last chance mission. And if he fails, humanity and earth itself will perish. So everything depends on him to save planet earth. What was so amazing about this book is that again, Andy Weir is combining actual science with science fiction, which I love. And he is very good at writing male main characters. He's not very good at writing female main characters, hence why I did not really enjoy his previous book, Artemis. But this book was amazing. He has so much humor. His male characters are so fun and interesting and enjoyable to read about and feel very loving as well. Oh my God, it was just so freaking good. <laughs> I want to read this again for the first time without knowing what happens. So if you like sci-fi, this is it. It's filled with action. It's filled with so much love as well between different people. And it's so freaking funny as well. There are so many sentences in here that just literally made me laugh out loud. Without a doubt, my favorite book of 2023. And I want to recommend it to everyone. Especially if you haven't read any science fiction before. I think this is a good place to start. It's just... Oh. It's so good. This was it. This was 2023. It's time for 2024. I am so beyond excited for the new year and for everything that it will bring. But by the time I'm filming this, it is still, let me see, it's the 22nd of December. So Christmas is still coming. It's, it's, it hasn't happened yet and I'm so excited. I really hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comments your favorite book of 2023 and also some books that you are excited to read in the new year. Thank you so much for this year, for all your support on my videos, on just, you know, all your kind messages, your kind comments, your likes, your emojis that you always comment. I love seeing that. You honestly made my year and I'm very excited for the new year and for new videos to come. So thank you so, so much for your support. And if you want to comment something, but you don't know what to comment, comment a starship or like a spaceship emoji because of my favorite book of the year that takes place in space. Okay, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video, which will be next year. And my first video of the year will be my 2024 reading goals and TBR. So I hope you're going to like that one. I wish you all the best New Year's Eve and lots of good books for 2024.